Is she awake yet? Please can't have anybody back here. It's the morning of my surgery and I'm feeling very nervous. I didn't sleep last night. I'm worried about an anesthesi, worried about what can happen to me in the post. I'm very nervous right now. My patients tell me all the time that what they worry the most about when they go to surgery is not what I'm going to do, but anesthesia. It's this kind of idea that you lose control when you're under anesthesia and they often worry that they're not going to wake up. Even though the risk of that is exceedingly tiny, that's what they worry about the most. I was up at 5 a.m. today. Really? Yeah, before your alarm went off. Got excited. I guess I am. I have a new girlfriend, a uh, no, uh, girlfriend with new boobies. Mm -hmm. I'm trading you in, getting an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> They may be laughing at this, but I see relationships change profoundly after plastic surgery. And it really runs from, I have patients that tell me, oh my gosh, my spouse cannot keep his or her hands off of me now, to the exact opposite, where I see patients who come in, their spouse, let's say their husband, takes care of them throughout the whole process, and then when they come back for their three-month visit, the spouse isn't there, and they've actually filed for divorce. <laughs> So there is this fear that some spouses have that, geez, if my significant other, if my spouse undergoes plastic surgery, maybe he or she's gonna leave me afterwards. That doesn't happen all the time, but it does actually happen. When Larissa had approached me to borrow money for her surgery, I was like, no, 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 no. But then she made it sound as if it was an investment into our future, I was completely on board. So he is paying for her plastic surgery, and it's maybe a loan, maybe not. This gets into some really murky waters. When you're dealing with paying for somebody else's plastic surgery, if that person is not a spouse that you share your finances with, it can get really, really uncomfortable. I've had patients who've had their surgeries paid for by online benefactors. I've had patients with their plastic surgery paid for by sugar daddies, and I've had patients who've had their plastic surgeries paid for by their clients who I never see again. So when you're dealing with paying for somebody else's plastic surgery, buyer beware. So, uh, hey, good morning. How are you? Morning. Are you all set today? Uh -huh. Okay, so the surgery will take, you know, about three hours, okay? You know, we're gonna do our best to make everything just go smoothly, so don't be too worried about it, okay? I've only, okay. I've only done this about 20,000 times. We've never had a serious thing happen. We don't plan on it happening today, okay? okay. Awesome. So I have researched this plastic surgeon, Dr. Lane Smith, and he is a bona fide board certified plastic surgeon. He's certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. So if you're considering plastic surgery, what you want to look for is somebody that is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, that is a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, and ideally the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, and somebody who has great reviews online, who spends time with you, and who has hospital privileges to perform the operation that you're considering. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, you're welcome. Good luck, hey, baby. Hey, sweetie, come on back. What are you? You are getting new boobs yeah. <laughs> and a new nose. You're gonna rock it, all right? All right, we'll take good care of her, okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. See you on the other side. Come on back. I hope that everything works because I'm a little bit nervous. I'm terrified to think that I can wake you before the anesthesia has the full effect. So this is what I love to see prior to surgery. I get patients who come to see me and they are so, so nervous that they shouldn't have surgery. Other patients that come in and they are so excited and there's no nervousness at all, and that makes me actually a little bit nervous because plastic surgery is serious. You can die from plastic surgery, and when they have absolutely zero nervousness at all, it makes me wonder, are they truly taking this as seriously as they should? Okay, let's see. All right, Blaine. Right now we're dissecting to get down underneath the muscle. We're gonna put the implant in under the muscle. Dr. Smith is doing a breast augmentation, and he's talking about putting the breast implant underneath the muscle. 
So why would he do that? Well, the most common complication from breast augmentation is capsular contracture. And this is excess scar tissue that can build up around the breast implant. This can make the breast look and feel hard, firm, and even painful. By lifting up the pectoralis muscle, this is the major chest muscle, by partially lifting that up and slipping the implant about halfway underneath that muscle, you lower the risk of that complication happening. And then we kind of remove some of the areolar skin. We're going to make her areolar smaller, so we've done that. And just wants to ooze, doesn't it? All right. The areola is the circle of pigment that surrounds the actual nipple. And in some people, the areola can be excessively wide. And so one thing we can do at the time of breast implant surgery, and sometimes when we're not putting in implants, we can reduce the size of the areola to make it smaller. I've had patients who've come to see me with areolas literally the size of a coffee saucer. And we have brought them down by removing the extra areolar skin and by using what we call a purse string suture to cinch the areola smaller. So we've created a pocket underneath here already. Okay. And we're gonna put the implant in, okay. Okay, good. So if you look closely, you see that the implant that he's putting in has some brown liquid on it. That is not blood, that is betadine. And betadine is an antiseptic, so the idea is that you want to prevent that implant from getting bacteria on the surface when you put it in. One thing that I would do different from Dr. Smith is that when I put the implants in, I use an implant funnel. And this literally looks like a frosting bag that you put the implant in and it allows you to squeeze the implant through a small incision without it, let's say, rubbing against the skin and potentially getting bacteria on it. Did you know that you can look upwards of five years younger in just two minutes a day? You don't need to put a ton of products on your skin to look and feel amazing. The Yoon Beauty 2 Minutes 5 Years Younger Skincare Bundle is perfect for the busy person who wants glowing skin with the least amount of work. I put these four products together just for you. They're made with natural and organic ingredients, great for all skin types, and perfect for all genders. Check out the Yoon Beauty 2 Minutes 5 Years Younger Skincare Bundle at YoonBeauty.com and get over $30 off the individual product price. I guarantee you'll love these products or your money back. Okay, we're gonna go to the nose now. We're gonna go on and fix the septum first to fix her breathing. And then we're gonna go on and, and make the nose much smaller. All right, short nasal speculum of injection. Okay, good. Okay, good, one more. Okay, okay. Why did he do the nose surgery after the breast implant surgery? Well, in surgery, you always wanna go from clean to dirty. And so the cleanest operation typically is one where we're putting an implant in, where we really want to avoid any bacteria from getting on that implant, because that can increase your risk of infection, and with breast implants, a capsular contracture, that excess hardening I told you about. When you're doing a nose job, you're inside the nose, and as much as you try to clean it out at the time of surgery, it's not gonna be 100% sterile. So you always wanna start with the implant surgery first, and then progress to those operations, that are less clean. What would be less clean than, let's say, a nose job surgery? Well, maybe surgery down there. Eric, all right. I bet you've been kind of nervous, but yeah. everything went perfectly. All right right on. Yeah. Everything went just like, just like she wanted it. Breasts look great. Um, he's gonna have to wear the supporter bra and hold them sort of in place, and they'll be perfect. And then the nose is very narrow, like she wanted. Is she, so, she loopy right now? Uh, she's in the recovery room, but she is probably a little out of it. Give them, you know, maybe about 20 minutes. Thank Thanks, you. Eric. Sometimes people are awake very quickly. You know, you do these anesthetics sometimes, and they wake up so quickly that the family can see them within 10 or 15 minutes. Other times, the patients are real snowed. If it's a longer operation, then they can really snooze away for even sometimes a couple hours before the family is allowed to come on in and see them.
she awake yet? Please can't have anybody back here. he got in trouble. The problem with sneaking back there where there are patients who are waking up from anesthesia, number one, patient privacy. You know, you could have somebody back there that you may, let's say, recognize who you shouldn't know is having surgery or is recovering from surgery. And the second thing is, yeah, when patients wake up from surgery, like Larissa here, they can look a little scary as if they aren't doing well when maybe they truly are doing fine. So that can just increase the stress and the difficulty, not only on the um, loved one who's worried because they haven't seen their loved one look this way before, but it can also increase the stress on the caregivers who are trying to make sure that this patient is recovering well from the operation. Go ahead and lean forward. Uh, there you go. Then pick up that leg. Watch your head, honey. Uh -huh. Keep your head up here. All right. And then just put the strap behind her head. So behind it's not her head? Yeah, so it's not across your chest. I'm going to lift your head for me just a little bit. I'm going to get you a smoothie, okay? I think this is terrible advice. I do breast augmentation surgery pretty much every week. And I have patients' families ask me all the time if it's okay if they don't wear their seatbelt on the drive home. And the answer is no, it's not okay. You have to wear your seatbelt. And what I tell them is if you are wearing your seatbelt on your way home and you get in a massive car crash and your implant breaks, I can fix that. But if you're not wearing your seatbelt or that seatbelt is behind you on your back, and you hit your head on the windshield or the dashboard and you get an intracranial bleed, I can't fix that. Put the heat on. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God, turn, 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 turn. Sit. Wait, how long? This is nothing like I expected. We always go over post-operative instructions with the patient's families uh, and the patient prior to the operation, but it never truly sinks in, I think, until you actually see the person in front of you with their bandages on, dealing with the ramifications of going under the knife. Before, I just figured that doing a surgery was easy peasy, in and out, and you're good to go. But seeing Larissa in the state that she is in now is just devastating to me. Uh, it definitely gave me a wake up call of, you know, how important she really is to me. Yeah, it's really hard to see her in pain. It's something I'm not used to. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't expect it to be like this. It's incredible how quickly the body heals and how quickly most people get back on their feet. Uh, Larissa being young and healthy, I bet you she's gonna bounce back very quickly and that she's gonna do really well with this. So Larissa saw a real board certified plastic surgeon to have reasonable operations performed. But what happens when you see doctors who botch your operations? Well, take a peek at the playlist right up here to watch my reactions to the TV show, Botched. They will entertain you and they will definitely educate you on plastic surgery. Take a peek, cause it's right up here. And remember, Eat real food, use clean skincare, and always consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.